Hey, this is Stu Mashwitz, and I'm here to tell you about Chromatic Displacement, a new effect in the Red Giant VFX Suite. I've got this uh, tough crew here, and I'm going to give them kind of a cool, like, glassy-looking, transparent force field thing using Chromatic Displacement here. Now, the first thing I need to do is create my displacement map. So I'm going to create a new solid, and I'm going to apply fractal noise to it, and make it into a sphere. So what I've got here is I've just got turbulent noise, which is actually usually a better choice than the fractal noise effect, and CC sphere, turning it into a ball. I can make the ball bigger, and what's kind of fun about this is I can also play with the fractal noise underneath the spherification, which looks really cool. So we'll probably dial that in more later, but for now what I don't want is the lighting that I'm getting from this sphere. So I'm gonna go into actually shading here, I'm just gonna put ambient at 100, diffuse at zero, specular at zero. And so now I've got an unshaded uh, sphere. And I'm just going to enlarge the radius until it covers my crew here. And I'll rename this to sphere and move it to the bottom and even just turn it off. So I'll get these guys here and I'm gonna take our new chromatic displacement effect and drag it onto them. And you can see we've got a few parameters here, but the basic idea is picking a displacement layer and then increasing the amount of displacement. So our displacement layer is gonna be sphere, and we're gonna make sure that we're using that layer with all of its effects and masks so that we get the fractal noise and the spherification. And now let's just start cranking up that displacement. And as you can see, it's doing sort of a glassy kind of a displacement that is based on the contours of the shades of gray in this image. So instead of like the After Effects displacement map, this we're working a little bit differently. So let me just show you kind of the difference here. The After Effects displacement map is going to use pixel values to push pixels left and right. So we have horizontal displacement and vertical. Now there's nothing wrong with this, but what you can see is that first of all, since we're using the same kind of values for horizontal and vertical, we are getting kind of a diagonal feeling here. And the other thing is that uh, it doesn't particularly look very sphery. It looks displaced and in a neat way, but it's a little less predictable. This kind of displacement totally has its uses, but we wanted to make something different. We wanted to make something that took the contours of the grayscale and displace according to that. This makes it much more predictable to design the displacement layer, and I'll, and I'll show you a bit more of why that matters later. But for now, let's just enjoy the fact that we're getting this cool displacement effect, and hey, look at that. It's chromatic. In other words, the displacement is spread out through the chromatic light spectrum. Let's go back to those sphere controls and let's have a little fun. Remember that uh, scale setting on the fractal? Let's play with that and look how much we can vary that look. And then this is also kind of fun here. We can grab the sphere and uh, <laughs> rotate it. You really see the kind of glassy spherical effect that it has there, it's pretty neat. And all of that just based on these grayscale contours. All right, now let's zoom in a little bit and take a closer look at some of what chromatic displacement is doing to the pixels in our image. So as we crank up displacement, we are pushing the pixels around and also spreading them out through the chromatic spectrum. And so to control that, we have two controls. We have a control over the spread, and then we have control over how much chroma color is introduced into that spread. So spread is set to 10. If we turn it to zero, we've just got the glassy displacement. And this is still a super useful thing. You don't necessarily always want the chromatic quality of it. But as we turn up spread, we're turning up how much of that range of displacement is taken up by this kind of smooth spreading out of the values. Then we can also separately adjust the chroma. So let's look at this little interesting colorful region here. As I reduce chroma from 100 to zero, I'm just controlling how much colorization is happening. So what's kind of nice about this is that you can enjoy the benefits of the spread effect even without the color. So without any spread, the effect looks very crisp and crunchy, and that might be what you're going for. Um, let's vary the amount here a little bit. 
But c- what can sometimes happen is just it looks a little, I don't know, like a displacement map. Also, it's not very flattering for our heroes here, and we'll talk about that in a second. Just cranking up a little bit of spread, even independent of the chroma, it just kind of softens this effect in a really pleasing way. I really like it. And then as you increase the chroma, well, then obviously you get this kind of sense where, you know, light is kind of being prismatically bent through, you know, like a prism or a piece of optical glass or something like that. And we have additional control over how that chromatic colorization effect looks using this chroma tint control. The default value right in the middle gives you kind of a spread from red to blue, but you can also tint it one way here. Let's go to the left. And now we're getting kind of, let's say like an orange to cyan kind of a tint range here. Whereas if we go the other way, it's going to be more like a yellow to magenta. So you get to dial in the tint of your chroma as well as the amount of it. And somewhere in there is gonna be the right setting for you. Another control that we haven't looked at yet is softening the displacement layer. So with no softening at all, we're using every little detail of the pixels in the displacement map to displace the image. And that's usually just a little bit too much information. So as we soften it ever so slightly, it just kind of rounds out some of that detail. And if you push it really far, you can actually eliminate almost all of the detail, which is kind of interesting in this case because it gives us almost like a lens-ish kind of an effect here, which maybe with a little more chroma spread might look kind of cool but that's not what we're here for today so let's uh, back off on that but actually now you know we are seeing something that I wanted to talk about which is that you can actually see sometimes if you really crank up the settings a little bit of this stepping here and we have a control for that as well this is spread quality and this literally controls one-to-one how many iterations are stepped through the chromatic range so if we double it to 30 you can see that pretty much smooths out maybe we still need a little bit more we could double that again to 60 if you really need the additional quality you can keep cranking that up to 100 it's still an incredibly fast effect to render as you can see here we can just scrub through the timeline and it's just going so there's no reason not to use the highest quality that changes the look for the better but no reason to set it any higher if you're not seeing any benefits anymore all right so let's get this back into kind of the shape that we thought maybe we were going for originally here so not nearly this much softening So we get some of that fractal quality back, backing off on the spread a little bit. Uh, Another thing to notice here is that displace goes in both directions. So if you don't like the kind of bulging look that you're getting from the positive direction, you can displace in the negative direction and get almost kind of the opposite effect. (laughs) We can either shrink her head into a tiny dot or expand it into a giant blurry blob. Um, So this is a really nice way to control your look as well, positive and negative displacement. What I wanted to talk about a little bit was just how, again, going back to the idea of using the contours of this image here to control the displacement. So I'm going to pre-comp my sphere, which um, shouldn't break anything in my comp, but it's going to give me just a little extra place to play and control things here. So, for example, let's just add some text and let's go back here. So here's, this is what I'm talking about here. In fact, let's turn off the ball. I've got my little text here and you can see it just, I mean, it just looks like glass. It looks kind of like cool bubbly glass. It's so fun. And this also shows off uh, something kind of interesting, which is as I soften, you see, we're still respecting the alpha channel boundaries uh, of the, uh, of the text. That is a control that you have here. So you can, um, Control how you use the displacement layer alpha. So you can use it, which is what we're doing now. I'll show you what it looks like when we ignore. So when we ignore, you know, we're displacing kind of through the edge here. Whereas when we use it, we're cutting off. We're not doing any displacement at all where the displacement layer is transparent. And then the other fun one we have is cut out. And this one can be really useful because of segmenting the displacement away from the background can give you... Uh, a really nice effect that I'll show you in a minute. For the meantime though, uh, there was a reason that I pre-comped this and it wasn't to add text to it. It was that I wanted to add a nice middle gray solid to this. Middle gray, you know, really any solid color is gonna be kind of like neutral, basically no displacement. If I go back here, no displacement. So what I can do with this is I can make a soft sort of blob of not displacementness. Soften it up here and just kind of dial it in in the area where their faces are. So what we would do in a movie here is we would want them to seem like they're behind a cool force field that maybe she is emitting with her cool badass posing 
techniques, but we still, we don't want them to, <laughs> to look like a sad elephant. So we would dial in, you know, this kind of undisplaced region here so that you know, they look a little displaced, but maybe she looks a little bit normal, you know, and that's something we can do, uh, you know, kind of artfully and interactively. There we go. And now as I dial up and down this displacement, it looks kind of plausible, but you know, she's kind of protected from the effect a little bit. Now let's talk a little bit about that cutout effect I mentioned. So here I've got a photo of some buildings in Taiwan. And what I wanna do is make it look like it's raining in kind of a cool Blade Runner way as if we're looking through the window of a car or something like that. So I've already set up this layer here. And all this is is good old CC Particle Systems 2. And it's just making these little raindrop particles that kind of overlap each other in a nice way. And each one of them is gonna behave like a little displacement map. and then. Just for fun, I threw Turbulent Displace on there to make them a little bit less perfect, right? Let's apply Chromatic Displacement, and we're going to choose Rain as our map, and we'll just turn up the displacement amount a little bit. And you can see we've got our beautiful little raindrops. Oh, I love them. They look so cool. We could probably dial in their appearance a little bit, but let's just check and see that they're kind of doing what we expect. I think I expect the raindrop to kind of be like an upside down version of the world outside of it based on what I know about lenses. So I'm gonna switch to negative displacement to get that effect. And it's looking a little sizzly in there. So I'm gonna turn spread down because I don't, I think, you know, they would be a little chromatic, but not a ton. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Well, let's go to full res here and see the real quality. Yeah, maybe I, it's too much displacement. Okay, it might also be a little too much softening. There we go. Okay, now we're getting there. Now, I, I could nuance that all day long, but the truth is that's not what's going to make this look realistic. Yeah, let's just watch that playback because it's going to be fun. That's looking pretty cool. But the key thing here is that they should be out of focus, right? So that's where that cutout mode comes into play. So I'm going to, on the displacement layer alpha, choose cut out. And then I'm going to actually just duplicate this layer and have one without the effect. So now I've got the displacement on a separate layer. I can grab it and move it here above the buildings. And I'll just apply camera lens blur. And now I'll just dial in my kind of defocus look for these guys until they are just the right amount of out of focus. And now I've got this very believable uh, and super easy to make raindrop on windshield kind of look going on here. Okay, and the last thing I want to show is this other example here. So I, I shot this very, very simple background uh, in my studio here, and I just did a little camera push in on these speakers here. And what I did is I tracked that in 3D. Just use the After Effects camera tracker and just tracked that camera move as we kind of push in a little bit. And I created this wave element here. And again, this is getting back to the idea that by using the contours of grayscale, it's very easy to design a displacement map. So in 3D, what happens is that those layers start emitting out of those speakers. And I just set that up with a bunch of copies of this uh, layer just animating away, real, real, real simple. Um, and then that, is used as a displacement map here. And look how cool this looks right off the bat. So that's chromatic displacement. Easy setup, predictable results from just about anything you'd wanna use as a displacement map, and this beautiful, high-quality, optical, light diffraction, chromatic look.